a very good afternoon to everyone present here. Uh, I, on behalf of the English department, welcome you all to another webinar series. Uh, today we have a speaker, uh, Ms. Kevinio Mujude, which she will be speaking on the topic ecological concerns in the writings of Eastern Kiri. Um, let me just give a brief information or introduce the speaker to every one of us here. Uh, Ms. Kevinio Mujude is an assistant professor in the Department of English at College Timopo. She holds an MPhil degree and has cleared the UGC net. Besides her teaching profession, she is pursuing her PhD from Nagaland University, Kohima, and has also served as a violin tutor in Jaren School of Music, Chumokedima. Um, she will be presenting on the topic ecological concerns in the writings of Eastern Curie. Uh, before I give time to the speaker, uh, I just want to give a, a brief notice that if you have any questions for the speaker on the presentation that she's going to be presenting now in a few minutes, please uh, leave a message in the chat option, which we will be addressing on later on in the Q&A session. Um, now I give the time to our speaker. Okay, hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Rongson, for the winsome introduction. Before I start off with the topic, of course, I would like to thank uh, Tetzel College and the Department of English for uh, giving me this lot to share uh, my, some of my ideas with uh, every one of you. And um, ecological concern, uh, for me, uh, it has been an area of interest uh, for me. And uh, this presentation is an outline to um, to study the uh, to study some of the select works of Eastern Kiri through the lens of ecocriticism itself, and as a researcher and a reader, I uh, this is the one particular thing that I have observed uh, in her uh, writings itself when I uh, went through some of her works. So I would uh, be sharing some of these uh, things that I have uh, that I think I found in her works. So I would present my uh, screen and uh, move forward with the. Uh, Presentation. Okay. Um, so Ecological, the topic that I would be uh, talking on is um, ecological concern in the works of Eastern Kirim. So um, the presentation uh, today is an attempt, uh, as I already uh, mentioned, to redirect uh, the mind of the readers or the listeners, of course, towards the value of nature uh, and take into account uh, her writings as an awareness novel. So when we go through the novel, uh, when we go through the presentation, I hope that we will all get a sense of uh, the importance of nature in our life as well. Okay, so we will start with the topic. I will give a, a brief introduction about the theory of ecopriticism itself in the first place. So ecopriticism, uh, or it is also known as ecopriticism or environmental criticism or green studies. So um, when it comes uh, to this theory, a basic definition of ecopriticism was uh, provided by an early anthology that is the, the Ecopriticism Reader, published in 1996, that calls uh, it the study of the relationship between literature and the environment. And we see that this uh, uh, movement began in the USA in the late 1980s and in the UK in the early 1990s. And as a concept, uh, it first arose um, in the late 1970s at uh, meetings of the WLA, which is the Western Literature Association. And uh, Michael P. Branch addresses the word ecocriticism back to William Rueckert's 1978 essay literature and ecology, an experiment in ecopriticism. And further, uh, we see that uh, a claim for its first usage of the word ecological is met by the prominent uh, US ecocritic 
Carl Kober uh, from his uh, article, Home and Brasmere Ecological Holiness. And um, if we move forward, we see that how, uh, though the term was first introduced, though the usage, the term was uh, introduced by uh, William Brooker and uh, it was first used by uh, Carl Kober, we see that it was, uh, it was Cheryl Blockbarty who um, emphasized or who revised the uh, theory itself. And um, this particular theory, uh, it calls for a paradigm, paradigm shift from the human-centric to the biocentric. So this theory, it uh, came out as a response to the burning issue of global warming, which is uh, definitely still uh, very much prevalent in our uh, present society. So there was a brief outline about the theory of ecocriticism itself. Then, uh, just to give you a brief idea of what ecofeminism is, because uh, this might be uh, a new uh, theory for many of us. Um, ecofeminism is a, a port uh, mantu term, which means uh, it is the combination of uh, the word ecology and feminism. And uh, ecofeminism is one of the significant ecological and uh, feminist movement. It was, uh, the term was coined by Francois de Lumon, and uh, this ecofeminism, uh, eco it views that racism or classicism and sexism are interconnected and liberation of women cannot be fully achieved without the liberation of nature and vice versa. Um, in other words, uh, if we put it in other words, uh, eco-feminist, uh, the eco-feminist, it calls for an end to all operations, arguing that no attempt to liberate women or any other oppressed group will be successful without an equal attempt to liberate nature. So that is uh, what we see of when it comes to eco families and then they are of the view that all living things have uh, equal value and worth. So this uh, is a brief introduction again of the uh, eco feminist theory. Of course, I would be applying uh, eco criticism uh, for uh, the works uh, that we will be dealing with. But uh, this is something that I wanted to uh, share with you all. I wanted every one of us to have a knowledge about. So I give you a little bit of introduction about the theory itself as well, ecofeminism. Uh, we will uh, now uh, start with our first, uh, we will, I will give you, um, so these are the novels uh, that we will be dealing with, uh, When the River Sleeps and The Sound of the Thundercloud and Sky is My Father. This, uh, out of these three novels are uh, the work that I will be dealing with and I would try to bring out the ecological concern that the writer has uh, projected in these uh, writings. So we will see the, uh, the style of, of Kiri, how Kiri, uh, Isterin Kiri writes. So uh, when it comes to Isterin Kiri, we, uh, he, she is the one who is not, uh, she, who is not known to anyone. She is a well-known writer. So I, I'm sure that every one of us are well aware of uh, this particular writer. So she is a poet and a novelist, and uh, she uh, can be regarded as one of the finest uh, storytellers from the region itself. And uh, we see that her writings revolve around the people and the environment of our hometown that is Netherlands. And her novels are, when we look into her novels, her novels are simple, lucid, and written in a language that can be understood by all kinds of readers. And uh, it is a blend of myths, legends, and folk tales, storytelling with the everyday life of the village people itself. And of course, the backdrop of every of her novel is drawn from her Naga roots, and it tells a story with the hills and its rocks and trees as well. Then, uh, besides all these elements, we also see that she addresses the issue of women as well, and uh, which is why uh, her novels are uh, multi-layered. Uh, that means it has a, uh, it is, uh, it consists of different elements and issues that she weaves in. Then, uh, most of her uh, settings are in the rural areas, uh, depicting the beautiful landscape uh, surrounding the human habitation. And uh, such a writer she is that captures the attention of the readers and uh, one finds himself part of that story. So that is a little uh, 
bio about the uh, writer is doing here and uh, through her writing definitely she depicts the social cultural life of the Naga people in general as well. Uh, we will start we will start uh, with the uh, first uh, novel when the river sleeps. So um, when the river sleep uh, if we go through the novel we see that uh, she, uh, this novel uh, presents the protagonist, Bilye. So the protagonist here is Bilye, the character Bilye, who goes out in an adventurous journey to achieve the heart stone. So by, uh, with the start of the novel, Bilye, uh, the character itself, makes a statement saying, the forest is my wife. So the reason why she, uh, he comes up with that statement is uh, because her uh, his aunt uh, his aunt will keep on nagging him to get married so by stating that following uh, this following statement the forest is my wife billy is uh trying to show that um it is uh that nature is sufficient for him and um he, he does not need anything because nature has uh, provided him with all the things that is uh, uh, that is necessary for him or that is essential for him to uh, go about living his life, which is why he does not need the field to settle down. So uh, he comes up with a statement, the forest is my wife. That, um, the novel also presents how people uh, knew natural remedies for all kinds of illness and injuries. Uh, there is an instance where uh, after getting injured, um, Bilia, he searches for uh, herbs and uh, he finds a uh, bilhun which will stop his bleeding. And uh, if, until today, we, uh, we do have, uh, I'm sure that we also know uh, some of the natural remedies or some of the herbs that uh, would definitely uh, help us even though we are not uh, even though we might not have any kind of uh, medicine within uh near us we always have this uh, uh this uh, natural resources around us which will help us uh, in easing our pain then uh we see that um as he was undertaking his journey uh, he was advised by the old man to take certain herbs like uh, sienna or bitter wormwood and uh, tihar uh, that is a soft-lived plant with a rather unpleasant smell, which was good for warding off evil spirits uh, as well as for a number of ailments. So, uh, Kiri tries to present all these uh, things, uh, all these uh, pictures or all these images in uh, emphasizing the, uh, the usefulness of nature itself to men. Then uh, we also see how uh, Kiwe presents the picture of the natal forest uh, in order to show the dying art of uh, bark weaving as well and how people can make a living or survive through nature. Thus, um, it depicts the richness uh, of uh, the, the richness of nature and the way it proves to be helpful to the people and. Um, which is why we uh, as humans, we need to respect, or we as individuals as well, we need to respect nature so that both the world uh, can coexist uh, together. So these are, uh, uh, this is uh, the particular uh, thing that we find out from uh, this particular novel as well, how she emphasizes on nature and how uh, people uh, have access to all uh, this kind of natural resources and how nature is, uh, nature provides everything that is uh, uh, needed for a um, human to survive. Uh, and, um, the next uh, is, uh, this is the, the sole text that I want to focus upon, uh, Son of the Thunder Cloud. Uh, so, uh, Son of the Thunder Cloud um, is uh, here in this um, novel. This novel um, is about, uh, um, it is about the character Pelebozo, who undertakes a journey to find the village of uh, weavers. And then um, we find that uh, in this novel, he is considered or he is regarded as the carrier of regeneration itself. And the reason why he is regarded as the carrier of regeneration is because uh, the moment he steps in the abandoned village, uh, Ren sets in, uh, the rent sets in, which is why he is regarded as uh, the carrier of regeneration. That, um, 
if we move further, we see that uh, Ki represents how uh, the earth uh, gives birth as well. And she beautifully states this through her character, Masanyo. And um, Masanyo says, it's called birthing. I quote from the text, the earth has birth trees, rocks, and grain, just as a mother births her offspring. So uh, we see uh, how uh, she depicts nature provides man with everything and then uh, this novel um, in a way uh, also depicts uh, or brings forth the picture of uh, what will happen to our land if um, if we uh, do not um, take proper measures or step uh, to protect the natural resources then um, the novel unfolds uh, with a great with a great famine that hit a uh, village, uh, village, and it presents a picture of how everyone died of hunger. Um, here it is uh, quoted: "In a few days, uh, the supplies of food went out in every household, and Pellet's parents died within hours of each other." And uh, so this reminds us. Uh, with this uh, following statement, we can say that it reminds us that we are, uh, as humans, we are very much dependent on nature itself. And uh, without nature, it is impossible for us to survive uh, on this earth. Moving further, um, it um, also presents a curie, also, uh, also projects the environmental awareness through this particular work. and. Um, we can say that uh, Kire, uh, Kire's words are filled with uh, natural elements and then uh, she has a strong sense uh, or she has a strong concern for nature around her, which is why she depicts uh, or she projects uh, this issue in her writings. Then um, I quote from the text again uh, where uh, It's uh, here, the earth was so dry that the soil no longer looked like soil. It had cracked apart, the brown color had gone from the soil, and if the traveler were to describe it, he would call it gray, death gray. So uh, through this uh, picture, she presents how uh, proper measures need to be taken, or we need to preserve our natural resources or our nature itself, uh, so that we do not uh, we are not faced with the consequence that is uh, projected through the novel where the earth no longer looked uh, where the earth or the soil no longer looked like soil itself so if uh, she gives us this awareness or this warning that if we uh, do not uh, protect our um, natural resources while we still have time that we would also face the same consequence one or the other day then um with that uh image uh, with the consequence uh, she also brings forth uh, how uh, the nature would provide us with everything how nature would be in abundance if we take proper care uh, or if we take proper measure in order to preserve or protect them uh, from the cold the trees and rocks are the sons of the earth take care of them and they will take care of you and your children so this uh, particular statement again uh, brings uh, it uh, present, presents us the picture that uh, if proper measures are taken to preserve nature or to protect nature, then uh, nature will provide us in abundance, and then it will not only uh, it will not only be sufficient for us as well, but then it will be sufficient for the future generation as well. Uh, which is why, um, since uh, we are in a society, we are in a, a time where uh, natural depletion is, of course. Uh, coming up as, as a burning issue for everyone. Uh, this is uh, a perfect novel which would definitely help uh, shape the mind of the readers uh, as well as um, the researchers who take up this work to uh, start considering to take proper measures or to start considering to uh, preserve or protect our natural resources without disrespecting them or without over uh, exploiting them. And um, it also gives us the idea that it is uh, never, of course, it is never too late to start over. Uh, though we might be using the natural resources uh, in a very um, haphazard manner, we might not be using it judiciously, but then now, uh, after going through uh, these works uh, by writers, uh, 
when we come across uh, works uh, done by these writers, uh, we, uh, of course, there is a sense, there is a, a sense that arises in us that, uh, yes, it is time that we start respecting nature and then we start preserving each if we want to survive or if we want to uh, have a look for the future generation as well. So these are uh, some works uh, that uh, definitely uh, shapes our mind or shapes our outlook or perspective towards uh, the kind of uh, behavior that we have been uh, that we have been practicing so far when it comes to using the natural resources itself. Okay, and then uh, she also uh, presents uh, the uh, the picture of the abundance of nature itself. And then uh, here we see the earth was green. Where Masanyo uh, Masanyo is uh, is another character from the novel. So where Masanyo narrates the story of her village uh, before the famine hid them to Belem, and uh, she states, the earth was green and fertile. There was food everywhere. No one sealed the forest. Um, no one sealed the fields because there was no need to. So this is the picture that she presents. Further, she also adds, uh, harvest us, eat us, so we can grow up again. So uh, the writer projects how we as humans uh, harm nature, uh, or we have to be, uh, we have exploited nature, or we are exploiting nature in all possibilities. But then um, nature always had a tendency to offer the best to us or to um, supply us to uh, to keep giving us the best that it has to give. So uh, we see that uh, each of us is responsible to protect the natural resources. Uh, we cannot rely on one person or the other. I cannot rely on you. You cannot rely on me to start protecting the natural resources. It is uh, it is us, it is within uh, us, the individual, that we have to start uh, practicing all these uh, practices. While, uh, when we uh, come across such work, and if it uh, in a way leaves an impact on us that we definitely need to start uh, practicing all this and leading an uh, example so that we do not uh, face the consequence that the uh, writer has uh, presented or the writer has projected in the earlier uh, statement as well how the soil no longer looked like soil. Earlier it was uh, the earth was green and fertile but then uh, when the famine hit them it was no longer uh, it no longer looked like soil. So it gives us uh, the uh, the idea or the picture that uh, man really had uh, has exploited nature, and if we still keep on doing that, that definitely we will. Uh, the time is no, uh, not long that we will uh, face the same uh, consequence that uh, we can see in the novel. Okay, so that is uh, about the novel, and then uh, we also see how. Um, when it comes to uh, nature uh, presenting us uh, with uh, all the natural resources, we also see how uh, Halie and Siete would always go out. Uh, other characters uh, would always go out in the morning to gather mushrooms, herbs, and berries, which will eventually feed them. So uh, I'm sure that this is something that we hardly, uh, we hardly notice or we hardly observe. Uh, of course, no one or none of us would definitely go out now uh, this time to do that, but it, we see how nature has been, nature was in abundance earlier and that people would uh, uh, go out in search of uh, these uh, wild fruits or herbs or berries in order to feed them. Uh, so through this as well, she presents uh, the picture definitely that uh, it's time that we start caring for the uh, resources that we are using. Then uh, she also presents Pele as someone who is uh, a, a very much a responsible being. Um, and then uh, definitely uh, by projecting Pele as being a responsible being. She also wants uh, every one of us, uh, especially the readers, since we are reading through her work, wor works, she definitely wants the readers to be uh, responsible like uh, the character Pele, who would think, who would definitely think for the future and not think only of himself or herself and being selfish. So we see, uh, I quote from the text, not to cut, um, so we see that uh, Pele was uh, about to build a, house where he needed um, uh, materials, he needed woods uh, in order to build that very house. But uh, he was very careful. Uh, he was very careful not to cut too many trees in the same area. He did not wish to disturb the fragile uh, ecology. 
then uh, the vegetation was new and young and we feared that uh, any sudden disturbance or uh, of that newly found balance would cause greater damage that could be repaired. So we see how uh, Pele uh, was someone who really thought about uh, uh, nature itself, who really thought about uh, the ecology itself, so that he was very he was very careful that he did not uh, uh, cut the uh, trees from the same area. If we, if it was we, if it was you and I, uh, I am doubtful that we would definitely go and cut in the same area. If it was uh, a shorter, uh, it was much shorter. Uh, we would definitely not uh, waste our energy going to find for another area if uh, the route is wrong. Definitely, we will go and cut in the short uh, uh, road uh, as well. Even if we have cut it for many a times, if there were hardly any uh, one two trees that is left, we will definitely go and cut there. But then we see that Pele was not someone who did that. Even if uh, it meant for him to uh, go around uh, in the uh, in the middle of uh, the uh, the forest uh, or in a, in a very long uh, road to cut the tree he did that because he was very careful he was thoughtful that it would disturb the ecology if he kept on cutting the trees in the same area over and over again so uh, we see how uh, he represents uh, this particular character Pele as uh, someone who is uh, very much uh, thoughtful of the uh, future generation as well that he did not only think of himself but then he thought of the future and then uh, he thought that if uh, he would do that if he would repeat that over and over again, then definitely he would disturb the ecological balance. And if he disturbs the ecological balance, then that is something that would take years to uh, to come up with again, that would take years to repair. And uh, we can see uh, the consequence that is uh, the result or the impact that is that we are feeling uh, in the world today. Because of global warming, we see the kind of uh, the weather changes that are taking place. So this is something that uh, Kyrie definitely as a writer uh, tries, uh, she tries to raise up in her writings and um, she also further states, uh, even the man would have to be very careful and remember to respect nature. So uh, she hopes that uh, through her writing, she hopes that everyone would uh, respect uh, nature the way we respect our elders or the way we respect someone uh, someone who is higher uh, to us in position or uh, the way we respect our parents, our siblings, our elders. So we need to give that equal respect, not just because we cut a tree and then the tree does not fight back or the tree does not hit us back, does not mean that we can keep on uh, cutting the trees for our own uh, selfish use. We have to respect them. If we cut a tree, then uh, definitely we would also have to make sure that we have a replacement for that. We do. Uh, we, we have an alternative for that again. So in this way, if we keep on doing, if we uh, start practicing that, then definitely we would uh, not have to face the consequence that uh, the writer has presented, that the writer has uh, projected, has given a visual uh, project uh, projection in his in her novel. So. Uh, we see that she is someone who uh, wants to send off the idea to everyone that it is us, it is uh, you and I, it is the individual that is responsible uh, of respecting the nature and uh, um, giving back uh, to nature what nature is giving back, uh, is uh, uh, giving to us or providing us. Okay, so that was about the. Um, a novel, Son of the Tender Thought, where we found uh, the kind of uh, issue that uh, the writer has raised uh, when it comes to um, protecting the natural resources and how she also gives us the visual uh, presentation of the consequence that will come to us as well as um, how we will enjoy nature in abundance if we are someone who uh, starts practicing uh, to preserve or to care for uh, our natural resources that we use for everyday uh, survival. Then uh, the next is uh, Sky is my father, and now I'm late remember. So um, here in this um, novel as well, we see that uh, Kire blends uh, 
the human lives uh, with that of the nature and the environment itself. And uh, definitely here she presents a particular village. She focuses on a particular village that is Konoma, which is definitely not a new, uh, not something which you uh, all does not have any idea. I'm sure that every one of you have an idea about the uh, this particular village Konoma. It is. Um, it is a tourist place, of course, and many uh, people come uh, and visit just because of the uh, way uh, the people have uh, protected nature, the, preser uh, the people have uh, preserved nature uh, till today. So we see a lot of uh, tourists coming in uh, uh, to visit this uh, particular village as well. And uh, we see that this novel starts with the description of uh, Konoma village and uh, how it is covered with uh, nature. She uh, says that uh, the people living in the Konoma village had a deep connection with the land, nature, and they took uh, pride in fighting and toiling for it. And uh, when we see the injury, when, we, uh, when uh, the novel unfolds, we see that um, Kobe's house was always first, uh, the first to be bathed by the rising sun and to be washed by his dying light as it sank in the evening. So this was something that uh, really, uh, that was, um, that really made uh, uh, Kobe, uh, the particular character, happy. Uh, and then, uh, because he was someone who knew uh, and understand, uh, who, who knew and understood the importance of nature itself. So this was something that he would always enjoy uh, when, uh, in the first day, when his day would start. Then uh, we also see that uh, uh, Kire uh, presents uh, the women characters uh, who worked tirelessly as well in the field in spite of the heat. And even in such states, if the rain comes along, along it takes uh, away all their weariness. Where uh, Vipiano says, uh, one of the characters, Vipiano, she says, but a little rain refreshes you and keeps you cool enough to work on. So we see how uh, the characters uh, uh, appreciate nature for the comfort that they provide to them. So if we were in their place, uh, definitely I don't think we would be saying that. We would uh, be coming up with a statement. Even if it rains, then we would start complaining that it was uh, it was such a hot day. It was uh, such a, it was a scorching heat that was uh, coming, and then suddenly this rain came in, and then now you cannot work. So probably that would be the first thing that will come into our mind. We would definitely not appreciate when uh, if rain starts coming in. But then when we look at the uh, character that uh, he represents, we see that there are a set of people who appreciate nature, who appreciate the comfort that, or who appreciate the joy that they bring in, though they might be tired uh, of, uh, because of the work uh, that they have, that they have been doing. Then Vikino again uh, comes up with the statement, uh, the sun and the rain are the creator's blessings. They rain and shine in turns for us to make our fields and get our harvest. War is part of a village uh, life, but if we have grain, we can withstand war. If we do not have grain, a few days of war will overcome us. So um, we see that uh, when we look at Kire's work, we see that uh, Kire tries to represent uh, characters who are very much understanding or who very much appreciates nature because they know that uh, they know the value of nature they know the value uh, they know the worth of the natural resources that they get in and here as well uh, we see that Vipiano, Vipiano, uh, she states that uh, the sun and the rain are the creator's blessing and then um, it is uh, it is God who uh, sends in the rain. It is God who sends in the uh, the sun in order so that we uh, humans can uh, harvest our field. We can get whatever uh, is needed for our for our survival. So through this, uh, we also get an idea of um, how um, the writer is doing here is trying to warn uh, the readers uh, to start thinking over and to start uh, practicing if we were not practicing to start uh, practicing uh, to preserve nature or uh, to spread uh, this very idea that um, it is never too late to start over or it is never too late to start respecting uh, the nature or the natural resources itself that um, that was about uh, the um, 
the works that uh, uh, through which we can see that uh, Kira has presented the ecological concern in her writing, and that she, she is the one who is very much uh, uh, concerned with the uh, issue that is rising up day uh, day by day. Then we also have uh, other writers like uh, Tamsila Al and Anita Desai, then Mamang Dai, then Sarah Joseph or Anita Nair. We have a list of writers who also deals with or who also shares the same uh, concept uh, and they try to portray the same issue when uh, it comes to the uh, ecological concern. And um, in Tamsila Al's uh, Labyrinth from My Head, that is a, story, a short story collection. And in the story collections I built Labyrinth from My Head, we see how uh, Lentina, that is uh, the character, was obsessed. Okay, she had an obsession, and then as an individual, uh, Lentina thought uh, differently than the society. And uh, in a time when everyone preferred granite for tombstone, she was the one who longed for a laburnum tree above her tombstone rather than an inscription of her name with the expensive stones. So we see that she was someone, we can observe that she knew the value of nature because all the artificial granites we know that will fade away one day unlike the natural tree which will keep blooming all throughout the year. So she had this particular character, had this particular, uh, this obsession uh, to have a laburnum, laburnum tree above her tombstone. So we see how writers have uh, come up with a uh, uh, their works in order to uh, to to portray or to pro to project the uh, issue of uh, the burning issue of uh, ecology itself. Uh, so we can say that um, uh, coming to the. Uh, the concluding part, we can say that uh, ecological concern, ecological concern, has uh, definitely been one of the uh, major issues uh, that. Uh, very writers uh, attempted to portray in their writings in order to spread the awareness on the present environmental condition. And um, when we see uh, that landscape in a piece of literature does not only convey the meaning of the natural beauty, but also the way man treats nature and how it functions. So when uh, we see any uh, kind of natural images in the uh, in a particular work uh, in a piece of writing, that does not mean that it, it only it is only used for uh, the sake of beauty or it is only used the, as a decorative piece. It it conveys a much deeper meaning. When we see natural images being used by writers, we see that there is uh, there is a reason behind why uh, we should know that there is a reason behind why writers are making use of such images in their writings and we see that it is through these kinds of works that we as readers are enlightened with uh, what has to be done for the future uh, world so that uh, the next generation definitely do not follow the same pattern. Uh, so in other words, uh, these works, uh, it definitely serves as the medicine for the illness that has affected almost all the people. So uh, it gives us uh, this uh, sense of um, after uh, going through all this work, uh, after uh, trying to relate it to the uh, to the uh, to the concept of ecology, to the issue of ecology itself, we have uh, we come to know that um, it is uh, definitely time that we start thinking over our actions that we have been doing so far. If uh, we do not, if we are someone who do not practice all those things that are listed in this uh, uh, works, then we definitely want to be uh, like uh, Pele, who uh, thought of the future as well. And uh, we should not be uh, someone, we should not be uh, individuals who should be selfish and think only about uh, about us. Uh, you all know better than me what we have to do in order to um, contribute even the least that we can. Uh, does not mean that we have to uh, start up a campaign tomorrow about um, the issue of uh, this ecology uh, does not mean that or we do not need to protest against the government tomorrow. We do not need to hold any great step. It is only it is we can start from the fall, uh, from the small steps onwards, and then the small steps are something that, of course, uh, we all know what we need to do. So we can start from our home itself. So through this uh, topic, I just wanted to um, give you an idea. I just wanted to share my observation of what I have uh, got. 
from reading the various uh, novels of uh, this particular um, writer, and I thought that this was something that was very uh, that is very much uh, that can be very much related to the present time. And then uh, this is something that we are all uh, suffering. We are all suffering the consequence now. So. Um, which is the reason why I uh, shared with you all and that uh, it's never too late to start over something. We all say that there is no age to, uh, to learn something new. So it is never too late to start something over. So uh, I hope that uh, this has uh, been helpful for every one of us uh, to start thinking about uh, the natural resources that we have or uh, the natural resources that uh, have been uh, given to us for survival. So. That will be, uh, that is it about uh, today's uh, talk. I will end my talk here. Uh, so thank you everyone for listening patiently to the talk. That was a very interesting and insightful talk that has addressed many concerns, which is very much needed and relevant in our present modern contemporary society. Uh, thank you so much for reminding us once again that nature is a very important factor which we really need to preserve, we really need to start working on that and how the authors, different authors, as, especially with relating to, uh, with concern to Esther in Korea, how she has presented uh, the, her concerns through her writing. Um, we will have a Q&A session. If anyone has any questions, you can always unmute yourself and ask, or you can leave in the chat option below. Um, before I address the questions, I just have uh, one question which I really want you to answer for me. Uh, as you were talking about uh, some of the thunder clouds, uh, I just want to ask, how does the author present ecofeminism in the Son of the Thunder Clouds? How does the author relate ecofeminism with the novel? Can you please enlighten me on that? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Bongson, for a question. That is a very interesting question. Uh, so yes, uh, when, uh, when we come to the ecofeminism, uh, as I've already given you a brief outline of what ecofeminism is about, uh, when it comes to this uh, particular novel, some of the context of, we see that um, in this particular novel, the women character, the woman character, especially Ms. Uh, she was uh, someone uh, who was uh, to be, uh, who was to fulfill a prophecy. And then uh, we see that uh, when she finally fulfilled the prophecy, uh, before she fulfilled the prophecy, uh, the villagers uh, never uh, considered her to be a part of the village. Uh, the villagers did not um, really look into her. The villagers did not uh, had any, uh, they did not uh, try to gather any information whether she was alive or not, uh, or whether how she is living because she is a widow. So they never considered her. But then after the prophecy was um, fulfilled, we see that um, the villagers, all of a sudden, uh, there is a change in their heart, and then uh, the village headman, uh, she comes to uh, her, uh, to this particular uh, character, Matanya, and requests her to stay back and then uh, share her blessings with the entire village. So this is something that we see how uh, there are uh, oppression or there are inequalities that are being made and of two women. So uh, with this oppression, uh, with this uh, kind of uh, inequality that is made out to women, uh, we see that um, Kira tries to uh, combine this operation with that of nature. So when it comes to ecofeminism, we see that it is because of the traditional values of uh, this reciprocity or uh, the traditional values of nurture or birthing itself that uh, women and nature are always connected together. So we see in this particular statement where Masanyo herself says, um, I will call it, it's called birding. Uh, the earth has birthed trees, rocks, stones, and grain just as a mother births her offspring. So uh, this is how she tries to uh, she tries to bring in the concept of ecofeminism as well in her uh, particular work, uh, *Son of the Thunder Club*, by uh, portraying the um, the. The, uh, the different kinds of uh, inequalities or the different kinds of uh, 
things that has been made out to women and how um, how women have uh, how we, women are exploited and as as well uh, the similar how uh, men has been exploiting uh, nature to the fullest without uh, preserving it. So this is how he brings in the concept of uh, ecofeminism in uh, some of the yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for uh, answering this question. Um, if there's anyone who wants to ask anything, Hi, Ms. Kevin Bindo. Uh, I think it's a really amazing presentation rooted in, you know, research. The spirit of research is really well because I can see that uh, you have reference to so many quotes in the novel and that's a really powerful presentation. So you should be proud of yourself. Uh, one question which I had for you, and let me see if I can phrase this in a way that will be simple enough uh, for everyone to understand. Uh, all right, so what I want to ask is this, okay, these novels uh, that you have spoken about by Istri and Kiri and all the other writers from Nagaland, uh, they are set in the past, right? Uh, they are set in the old Nagaland uh, when we don't have the presence of churches, Christianity, and that's where, where you know, nature has been portrayed so strongly. However, I have not seen uh, East Kire or other writers write stories that are sent, set in the contemporary society. The Naga society that we have right now has changed drastically. It is no longer what it was like in the olden days. So in the present context, do you think the Naga culture has undergone a paradigm shift where our connection with with this nature is no longer as strong as it was before or do you think it's still the same it's just that no one is writing about it what are your views about this okay thank you sir for the question and for encouraging me um yes uh i think that um of course, these uh, works have been written earlier, and then we see that uh, there were um, how uh, earlier we see uh, people were very much connected to nature itself. But then, uh, when we see the present era, then uh, definitely there there are some changes that have uh, uh, gone through. We can say, uh, and then. Um, Maybe it is also because of the uh, arrival of modernity itself that uh, people no longer um, are able to connect with nature itself, uh, that we are very much busy with all the uh, new inventions that, that has taken place. So earlier, uh, if we compare earlier, definitely there was uh, nothing of which uh, maybe they would uh, uh, they would do in order to pass their time. And it was uh, only nature that uh, they were able to connect with, they were able to find comfort in nature. But then now we have so many alternatives. We have so many, uh, we have so uh, many other stuff that we are engaged in those uh, stuff. And then we definitely do not um, find ourselves uh, in connection with nature anymore. Uh, there are uh, definitely, um, there would definitely be some writers who would definitely come up with uh, this kind of uh, issues in their works as well. Uh, if uh, yes, in their writings as well. But I think that uh, after um, it is only it is also because of these writings that we have read that maybe uh, the people, uh, the readers have understood so the consequence of what will happen if we do not, uh, if we do not um, start practicing what we need to. So maybe, uh, which is why we see uh, a, letter, um, a letter of it uh, this, uh, this in, the, in this present era, I think so, yes. All right, thank you so much. And uh, sorry, before I hand it back to the host, I uh, just wanted to quickly thank all the ENG 303 students, the third semester English honor students who have joined in. I do hope they are there. I can see some students, and I'm hoping that they're from the third semester honors batch because, uh, you know, whatever has been discussed here is essentially very helpful. It's going to be very helpful for your unit one of your honors paper. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Kevin Beno, you have done an amazing job. All right, back to the host then. 
All right, thank you so much uh, for the answers. Um, if there are any more questions, please leave in the chat option and I will ask for you or if you want to unmute yourself, you can always do that. Okay, uh, I have a question from Ms. Avivi. While Kire is trying to present the importance of nature in her writings, are there any situation where she had come up with the dichotomy of public and private property or land owning system in Naga society? Uh, that is the question. Uh, we fail to respect and protect the natural resources because the ma major part of nature belongs to public property. Uh, what is your take in it? So the question is, um, I'm going to repeat it again. While Kiri is trying to present the importance of nature in her writings, are there any situations where she had come up with the dichotomy of public and private property or land owning system in Naga society? Uh, we fail to respect and protect the natural resources because major part of nature belongs to public property. What is your take in it? Okay, thank you uh, very much for the question, um, Abhivi. Uh, well, uh, yes, um, regarding your question, uh, re uh, when it comes to the um, public and the private property, yes, uh, that is something that I definitely have not uh, come across in my writings as well. So um, I would uh, agree with you that uh, maybe it is because uh, of um, the uh, reason that we do not have uh, uh, our that we are not able to do our or do our part uh, because uh, a, a major portion of the land belongs to the uh, to the to the public or a major portions of the land belong to the private that we are not able to do our part and uh, which is why uh, since the land uh, it uh, the land is, uh, of course, it is uh, divided uh, among the various people that we are not able to do our part on protecting uh, the resources that we need to uh, because we do not have uh, that thought in us that it is ours, uh, it is our individual uh, duty to uh, be uh, the first or to be uh, someone to go and protect or to try to care for the resources itself. So I think. Um, Yes, it is uh, because of that particular um, reason that uh, today we see uh, a lot of uh, these uh, issues uh, as well, where we are uh, running out of the natural resources itself. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I hope that has uh, answered the question. Thank you so much. Um, if there is no one, if there are no more questions, then we can wrap up this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Kevitino, for enlightening us with the very much hey, needed talking. Oh, yes, uh, yes, Ms. Rosie. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I just thought maybe I can just pose a very general question. Like, I'm just thinking about this question, so maybe I thought KV, Ms. KV can give me a very good answer on this. So. Uh, my question for KB is like as I was just going through your slides and as I was listening to you uh, to, about ecofeminism, which you have enlightened us already with a very clear concept about it, where uh, we see uh, that it is a um, study of feminism that sees environment, uh, environmentalism as well, and how we see the relationship between women and the earth and how even uh, the eco-feminist thinkers draw the concept of gender to analyze the relationship between humans and the natural world. So this uh, concept got, uh, it, it is a very clear concept to me, but here I just wanted to uh, raise this, oppose this question to uh, Ms. KV. What, according to you, how do you feel the relationship, the relationship between uh, eco-feminism and the environmental ethics. What, according to you, or how, how do you, uh, yeah, differentiate between these two, eco-feminism and uh, environmental ethics? Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Razi, for your question. The difference between environmental ethics and eco-feminism, okay. Um, when it comes to the environmental ethics, uh, definitely uh, what they do is uh, they are more towards, they are uh, in a way ecocentric. They would uh, definitely focus, uh, put much of their focus on uh, the uh, ecology itself, on uh, nature itself. But when it comes to ecofeminism, uh, they try to, what the ecofeminists do is they try to relate uh, the problem that uh, women are suffering or they try to relate women with nature itself and uh, to try to uh, to come up with uh, the to come up with the image or to come up with a picture that uh, just like women have been uh, subjugated or oppressed by their male counterpart. Uh, similarly, we see how um, uh, nature has been uh, exploited by uh, man itself for its selfish uh, or for its uh, greedy need. So we see that whenever uh, maybe if we uh, buy a land or if, uh, if we buy a land and definitely uh, if uh, we want to set up a commercial site, uh, definitely we start uh, cutting down all the trees uh, or all the um, natural resources that are there without even considering what impact it will have. Uh, just because we want to earn uh, we want to earn in uh, the monetary effect. So uh, without uh, coming up with an alternative, uh, without coming up with another uh, alternative that that might uh, help us reduce the consequence, they do. Uh, they start uh, cutting up all the trees and they start exploiting the um, the resources itself. So this is how uh, the ecofeminist uh, comes up. The, the ecofeminist try to. Uh, present the um, the connection between women and nature and the uh, ecofeminists definitely address uh, the um, the issue of both uh, nature and uh, women that they are going through while the eco while the environmental ethics definitely they are more towards uh, the um, the they're more uh, they're more uh, ecocentric where they uh, portray more uh, where they uh, do not definitely consider uh, the um, the different kinds of uh, operation or the different kinds of exploitation that women are going through. They are they only portray what uh, nature has uh, gone through and what we are doing to the natural resources. So I think uh, that is uh, about the difference. Uh, thank you so much uh, for clarifying the relation between ecofeminism and uh, Mysterian curious writing, writing uh, the importance of it. Okay, uh, so the time is, I think it's almost time. So uh, I will wrap this up here in the webinar. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Gavivino, for enlightening us with such a wonderful presentation. Uh, and to all the people who have joined us today, thank you very much for your time and for being here with us. Um, I, with this, I conclude the webinar. Uh, everyone, have a nice weekend. Thank you so much once again.